you've heard the expression, sitting is the new smoking. There's no doubt that our sedentary lifestyle is harmful, and experts are raising the alarm from all sides in books, podcasts, TED Talks, videos, and more. Bill Baxter suffers from chronic... Do you feel discomfort or... Is sitting really the new smoking? Sitting is the new smoking. Unlike smoking, however, it's not that any amount of sitting is harmful. It's just that we spend far too much time doing it. In traffic, at work, in the park, at home on the comfy couch. We are sitting everywhere all the time. And the cost of all this inactivity? Chronic pain and immobility. What's really concerning here is how many of us have accepted this as the new normal. It's normal to have a stiff neck, tight shoulders, aches and pains here and there. It's normal to not be able to touch your toes and groan when you merely attempt it. But should it be? This video series focuses on experimenting and finding solutions to building a healthy, resilient and pain-free body. I'm conducting a long-term experiment to see if I can make my body bulletproof. My goal is to have healthy and strong and resilient joints and just an injury-free and resilient body overall. And I'm documenting what I learn along the way. Today, I want to share with you what I learned around one specific problem area, neck and shoulders. How does your neck feel right now? Take a moment to pay attention to what that feels like. Are your shoulders tense or relaxed? Can you move your head and your neck freely and pain-free? If you wanna take it further, you can do a little experiment and lie down, flatten your stomach, and turn your head on either side and see if you can comfortably lie like that. For most people, the answer is no. It is uncomfortable, painful, or even impossible. Most of us carry a lot of tension in this area and it can be stress related and it's also related to our typical hunched over posture that unfortunately most of us assume for most of the day. So if you have a stiff neck and limited mobility there, you're certainly not alone. But I had this to an extreme degree. I always had extremely stiff shoulders and neck and at one point it got so bad that I could basically not turn my head to the left anymore at all and it kept getting worse and eventually, through a pinched nerve or something, I started losing sensation in my left arm. There were certain movements that I couldn't do at all anymore with my left arm. And for example, when I do pull-ups, I would always drift to the right and I couldn't correct it. It was just like I was literally losing control over this side of my body. And of course, I tried to do all kinds of things about it. I tried at first to you know, massage it and relax it and all kinds of stuff. I also went to a doctor as it got worse. I got some kind of a relaxing cream and some painkillers and guess what? That did absolutely nothing. And I basically tried all the obvious stuff. If I was exercising, it got worse. And if I rested, it didn't get better and stretching and mobility exercises and so on also just didn't seem to make it better. So I really had to dig deep and experiment and find out what the hell I could do to fix this problem. So here are the things I tried that actually made a difference starting with the most effective. First up, let's talk about foam rollers. This here was an absolute game changer for me. So a foam roller is essentially a self-massaging device. You can use a foam roller like this for your upper back and neck and shoulders by lying on it and curling your back slightly and then just rolling up and down. And you can twist your torso to the left or right to be able to hit the left or right shoulder and neck area. Out of all the things I tried when this neck situation was at its worst for me, foam rolling was the thing that made a difference and it made a difference very quickly. After about a week of doing this every single day, even though in the beginning I had a really bruised up back from doing it, but it solved this problem. I got mobility in my arm back and eventually I didn't only go back to the way it was before, but I had much better neck mobility and much less tension after doing foam rolling daily than I had before. My favorite foam roller is this one. It's called a rumble roller and has these huge protruding things here that give you a really deep tissue massage. This is not for the faint of heart and maybe not for beginners. You can get, this would be like the beginner style. So this has no knobs on it at all. And so this is much less painful. So if you have very sensitive, you might wanna start with something like this. But also, you know, if you have a serious issue there, this might not get at it. Whereas a foam roller like this 
you'll definitely get into the underlying tissues there. This makes more of a difference, right? In the same category of things, I would also count these kinds of massage balls. This can also just be done with a tennis ball or something that you can either lean against the wall with this between the wall and your back, or you can lie down on it and you can basically massage specific points. The downside of this is that it is a bit more difficult to do and you have to know more precisely exactly where to massage. Whereas if you use a foam roller like this, you just roll up and down on it and it, it just hits everything. So for me, this is by far the best tool. If you've never done foam rolling, I highly recommend you give it a try. And on top of that, it's very cheap to do. So foam rollers are not expensive. And of course a tennis ball, right? If you, the ultimate budget solution is just a tennis ball, whatever that costs, can't be much. That could actually really solve some pain issues and some tension issues that you have. So highly recommended. Next, the Theragun. This is one of multiple models, but they all do the same thing. This is basically a percussive massage device. And it is in a way a hybrid between a foam roller and a ball that you use to self-massage. Like with the ball, you have to be precise. You can basically target a precise area, but it's easier to get an effect because it does this percussive thing. In my experience with this, it is often quite similar. It feels kind of the same as after a foam rolling session. And so for most intents and purposes, I would say that this is not better than a foam roller. It's maybe a bit more convenient because you can hit a precise spot and it's definitely easier to do it with this than to do it with a tennis ball that you're know, squeezing against the wall and whatnot. So it's more convenient for much the same effect. And so it's mainly a question of budget because these things depending on model will cost from like a hundred to several hundred dollars. So it's a question of, is it worth the extra convenience? When it comes to my neck specifically, this is neither better nor worse than a foam roller. But I also have to say on a separate issue, I had a stress injury on my Achilles tendon and out of everything I tried, this is what worked. So, you know, stretching, massaging, etc., didn't work, but a few sessions with this made the pain go away. So I think this has certain use cases, certain applications where it maybe indeed is better than a foam roller. Another thing I tried was a series of neck stretches that I learned from Chris Wildman and I'll link to that video in the description that I did every morning. And basically the idea is that you have neck stretching and mobilization in all dimensions along all axes. So I would do that once every morning for, I don't know what it takes, five to 10 minutes or so to go through the whole routine together with some shoulder rotations and some other warm up and mobility exercises. Doing this every morning also made a difference to especially my neck mobility, the amount of tension I carry. And the great thing about it, of course, it's completely free and it only takes a few minutes a day. The next thing I want to mention that made a difference for me is a bit less of a tool. It's not as tangible. It's basically just paying attention to my posture in general. For a while, every time I left the house, to go somewhere or go on a walk or something, I would take a moment to pay attention to how am I holding my shoulders? How am I holding my head? And am I actually walking upright or am I slouched over like usual? So I got into the habit of self-correcting my posture. So this is less of a do this once a day exercise. It's more of a change your habit, change the habits you have around posture. And this also made a difference for me. Something you can try out here is if you stand against the wall and you have your butt, your upper back, shoulders and head all aligned with the wall, what does that feel like? For most of us, it feels strange. It feels like you're straining backwards and it feels like you must look weird doing that. But from the outside, it looks normal. That position is supposed to be neutral. So you can practice that neutral position against the wall and then consciously put yourself into that position when you're walking or even when you're sitting or standing during the day to try and make it more of an ingrained habit. And on that note, another thing that makes a difference for posture is certain exercises. In general, I found that exercises and just strengthening the muscles in this area doesn't really make much of a difference, but certain exercises, especially things like face pulls and external rotations, can essentially counteract the slouched over phone or laptop posture. So you're kind of training the muscles that open you back up and that can help 
in feeling more neutral in that posture and being more able to carry that posture during the day. So these are the things that made the biggest difference for me. I tried a whole bunch of other things as well and many of them were just ineffective or had no noticeable effect anyway. So for example, I did many different mobility routines and mobility exercises and I followed the GoWad app, which is supposed to make a personalized mobility routine. I followed that for something like 50 days every day for 20 minutes and it basically made no measurable or noticeable difference. I've also done all kinds of you know, yoga and things like that. And like I said, it just made no noticeable difference to this specific problem. I'm not saying that these things are bad or useless in general. And also, I'm already more mobile than most people. So maybe, I'm not, I'm not saying this is not useful. I'm just saying, and for me, it doesn't get me beyond this point on this specific issue. I also tried a TENS slash EMS device, which stands for, I have to look it up, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation and electrical muscle stimulation. This is a funny little device that essentially sends a type of electric stimulation, like mild electric shocks essentially, and it's supposed to help with pain relief. I tried this as well. For me, this made no difference. And while I'm at it, you know, especially when I was in Bali, which is a place full of hippies, I also did a bunch of woo-woo stuff like, you know, energy healing and stuff like that. And None of that did anything for me either. But you know, can't hurt to try, right? So now you know about the things that made the biggest difference for me. And if you're someone who also carries tension in your neck and shoulders, and if you have limited head and neck mobility, I highly recommend that you try these out and see what difference they make for you. But I also have to say that I'm not entirely satisfied with where I ended up. Because right now, as I'm speaking, I have much less tension in my shoulders and I have a much more mobile neck than I had for years and years. But at the same time, I'm wondering, couldn't this be even better? So even though I'm pain free right now, I still can't turn my head fully to both sides comfortably, for example. I still feel a bit of a tweaking, a bit of just tension that feels like that shouldn't be there, should it? And as part of this experiment I'm doing, I don't just want to get, you know, a bit better and pain free. I want to get bulletproof. So what I've noticed is that all of these things brought me to a certain point, but then I seem to have hit a plateau. So at this point, even if I do more foam rolling every day, things don't get better than they are right now. And if I do more of these neck mobility stretches and drills and all the other stuff I mentioned, things stay as good as they are, but they don't get better. So I'm looking for ways to go further. And this is where it might get a little bit strange because I've come to realize that maybe there is something underlying this that goes far beyond the obvious. It seems that I have had a series of health issues that all somehow converge on my neck and throat. Here's what I mean. Obviously, I just told you about all this tension and pain and so on. That is an issue, a physical issue that converges in this region. But I've also had a period where my immune system was compromised because of antibiotics. And what happened when I had a weak immune system was that I got throat infections. Again and again and again, I would get a throat infection and basically nothing else. That was the health issue that kept coming up. And then another thing that's plagued me since forever, I've always had trouble projecting my voice. I basically have a weak voice. And when I speak, it feels like my throat is kind of constricted, like my voice has to pass through a narrow passage. And I easily get a hoarse voice, right? I lose my voice easily from speaking. And then Ryan from the Acario team, who knows a lot about this kind of stuff, also told me that maybe this has to do with my jaw. Maybe it has to do with my, the way my teeth are aligned, with my tongue posture, things like that. That's where I also seem to have some weaknesses. And finally, when I have done therapeutic psychedelics, under high doses of psychedelics, I tend to feel a lot of movement and stuff happening in this region. So I will also go into positions and stretches where my jaw is being worked and opened up and all this kind of stuff. So again and again and again, I'm seeing things that somehow converge on my throat. And all of this makes me wonder, could it be that all of this is psychosomatic? Is there like one underlying issue and all of these other things are just symptoms of the same issue? And that's something I'm trying to get to the bottom of. So what I'm planning to try is I'm planning to find out more about this whole tooth, jaw and tongue alignment thing and see what I can do there. I will take voice lessons and maybe singing lessons to see if I can somehow address 
this, this voice issue and if that can help loosen things up. And I want to see if I can find a therapist, but maybe not a typical talk therapist, but someone who does something more somatic. So someone for whom the idea that I have physical issues that may have an underlying psychological issue isn't like a foreign idea, right? And this is also where I'd really be interested to hear from you. Do you have any experience in this area? And are there any things that you would recommend now that I've laid this out? Is there anything that you would recommend I explore next in my quest to make my neck and my body in general more bulletproof? So if you've suffered similar issues, try out the things I've laid out here and let me know how it goes. And if you have ideas for where I should explore next, leave a comment and let me know.